Oh, I didn't see you there. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you like that funny little intro. I thought we could do something a little different. Maybe I got a little laugh out of you though. I know my jokes are pretty bad. So I built this cage to keep them secure so there's no possible- oh my god. In today's video, I'm going to be walking all of you through the amazing online resource of Dungeon Fog. Dungeon Fog allows you to easily map out your dungeons, buildings, whatever you need to map out for your tabletop role-playing game campaign. You can make a free account on their website and have up to three maps on your account at any time. It is an amazing resource and I would highly suggest it. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Welcome to D20 in Disguise. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so from the get-go you can see that you have all of the maps which you currently are creating right on the left there and then on the right it has a small column for news but we're gonna focus mainly on the map creator which is very intuitive and very well designed. So now that we're in the map editor I'm going to go through each of the little tabs you can see on the right there and walk through what you can do in each of them, what each of them do, and all the possibilities they present to you while you're creating your maps. Starting off with the basic tab, you have the name of the level which you're designing, the level of your dungeon or building or whatever kind of map you're designing. You have what texture the floor is. For example, if you're using a hex system or a square system, whatever your system uses. The next tab allows you to create different rooms and this is a tool which you will be using a lot. You can choose what texture the floor of the specific room has or what texture the wall of the specific room is, how thick the wall is, how thick the inner wall is, and you can change the type of wall. For example, you could make it appear as if the room was below ground in a hole in the floor or you could make it feel like a cave by roughening the insides of the walls of the room. Or you can make a multi-layered wall. Really, there's a lot of possibilities here, which you really just need to get into the editor and fiddle around with a bit. The next tool, the Paint Room tool, allows you to synchronize the style of all your different rooms without having to go into individual rooms and change the setting of what wall texture it has or what floor texture it has. You don't have to go into individual rooms. Instead, you can paint rooms by selecting a preset and just clicking on the room, painting it over, and being done with it. Next, we move on to our props and sort of flavor details. In this picture you have here, you see that there's piles of gold and some bags and some crystals, spider webs, some kind of flavor items to fill in the feel of the dungeon. And there are hundreds upon hundreds of different props to choose from in different categories. They have sci-fi props, they have cyberpunk props, they have medieval props, and more props come out every single month in monthly prop packs. The most recent prop pack, which will be coming out, is the Prison Prop Pack, which I'm really looking forward to, as prison breaks in TTRPGs really interest me. Next, the Token tab allows you to create monster token, NPC tokens, uh, PC tokens if you like, and you can go through live with your players through the dungeon and have different tokens representing them and enact map combat through this program which is just blows me away you can customize the border of the token the inner texture of the token and adjust all these different settings which are just there to stylize the token or present other possibilities now, how are you going to get through a dungeon without doors? 
Now, the Doors and Windows tab allows you to cut out holes in your room's walls, place passages, doorways, windows, arrow slits, cyberpunk doors, uh, rusted steel doors. There are many very specific door props for many different genres of RPGs, and it just, it really fills out the feel of the dungeon. Next, you can actually paint the texture of the floors of your rooms. For example, you can see where my pointer is right here. You have more of a, um, a dark, natural, smooth stone. And then towards the fringes of this treasure room, you have stone tiling. And this allows for an amazing feel and blend of different rooms so it doesn't just cut from that voice crack. So it doesn't just cut from maybe stone tiling straight to soil with small stones in it. It feels like a natural blend between the two textures. And of course you can adjust the color of the texture. So they have a swirling lava template. You could adjust that to be more of a blue hue and make it spring water or ocean water if you want to tone down the saturation and the exposure of the color of the texture. Really, it allows for endless possibilities. You want some green poison in your strange spider caverns? There you go, just tint your swirling lava green and you have what you want. You can also make shapes and elevated geometry in your rooms you can put shadows so that it feels as if it's a large towering in the middle of this strange ritual room or it's a snake pit in a wantai temple you can really get the feel of your dungeon down with these different tools including the room tool the paint tool the brush tool and the shape tool. The add or remove square tab allows you to change the dimensions of your dungeon. Perhaps you want to just cut off five squares where there's a room which you don't really want there. You can simply place here, just put minus five. And it's that simple to do. The shortcuts helper allows newcomers to know the keyboard shortcuts for everything which you can do in the software and it's really nice just to have around just in case well I want to do this really quickly and I do it a lot of the time while I'm making maps and I just want to be able to press two keys and boom there you go it's done and this is just a great tool for learning those shortcuts so you don't have to Google them or go to a help page. They're right there just for you to look over. Now, one of my favorite things about Dungeon Fog is its very dynamic lighting system because you can add custom lighting effects to pretty much every single prop. You want a torch to have a radius of maybe 15 feet its light just glancing around corners you can do that. You can adjust the hue of the light which an object is producing. Perhaps there's blue crystals in your crystalline cavern. You can adjust the color to be a bluish hue. The glow which they're setting off. And the glows are collective. So the more glowing objects that are clumped together, the more extreme the light source will be. Which it just it looks really good. Sadly, my computer can't actually run the lighting effects, but trust me, I will definitely throw up a quick picture of the lighting effects in action, and it just looks beautiful. Next, we come to the Layers and Levels tab, and this allows you to name different rooms add number labels to them, name different props in those rooms, and create multi-level dungeons, naming those different levels and putting them in the appropriate order. You also have 
your GM notes. And this allows you to make notes on pretty much everything in your dungeon. Rooms, traps, chests, objects, containers, tokens, anything you want. So maybe a trap has a certain uh, difficulty class or a certain role you have to make to avoid it or detect it or whatever. You can put that in some notes and then export those notes alongside your map which is a really handy tool that you can export your notes with your map, which it just, it saves a bunch of time making separate notes on a separate software and it just saves time. Now, all you have to do is go to the small export tab on the top left, go ahead and select the level which you wanna export and click export. It's that easy, that simple, even these larger maps which span 100 feet, maybe 200 feet by 200 feet, take only about two and a half hours to create. And the, the maps themselves look beautiful and professional. And it's just an amazing resource overall. I, I can't stress that enough. I would highly suggest it. The great GM from How to Be a Great GM, he highly suggests it. And with Project Deus coming, which I am super excited for, I will put a link to the description in that if you don't know what that is, because ah, I'm so excited. No, but it's it's definitely something for all GMs to look forward to, especially if they're using these softwares, which every GM should. They're great resources. Anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this kind of really quick flyby sort of tutorial for Dungeon Fog. It's an amazing map editor. And of course, you can go through and look through other people's maps which they published onto Dungeon Fog. And many of these maps are of very high quality. And if you're just looking for a quick pre made map to throw in as a dungeon which the players have stumbled across and are like, oh, well. Let's just go into it, and you didn't even have anything planned for it. Just hop onto Dungeon Fog on your iPad or on your computer, just at the table, just grab a quick map, and you're ready. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you learned something new, hit that like button. And please tell me in the comments, what did you learn, and what would you like as my next sort of tutorial for these online GM tools? If you really like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. You all have a great day. Keep on creating and I will see you in the next video.